Beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and welcome to Brick Stitch 101. Since many of you here joining me are brand new to bead weaving, I thought it'd be fun to sprinkle in some simple tutorials to help you learn more about some of the most basic bead weaving stitches and provide you with a video to refer back to when I'm using Brick Stitch, for example, in a more complex design. So, Brick stitch is commonly done with seed beads, but I feel like this stitch really, really shines when you use them with delicas, these little cylindrical shaped beads because they fit so well together. Down here below, we have three different examples of brick stitch. The first one over here in this bracelet, which I do have a tutorial on by the way, shows how you can use brick stitch back here to decrease the strands in a multi-strand bracelet or necklace. I have this example here where you can actually use a brick stitch to bead around an object like a connector. And then the third example, which I will be doing a tutorial on very soon, are these earrings where you can use brick stitch to create a unique beaded design and a shape all its own. Today we're going to learn the basics, like I said, so I will be showing you how to get started, how to increase a row, how to decrease a row, and how to end your brick stitch to a point. I will be using some size eight seed beads today just so it's a little bit easier for you to see since they are a larger size. The first thing you need to know is how to start your brick stitch and how wide do you want your first row? Do you want your first row to be three beads wide or do you want it to be a lot wider? No matter how wide you want it to be, you're always gonna be starting brick stitch with the ladder stitch. Now I know that's introducing another stitch to this very simple tutorial, but that stitch is so basic, it probably doesn't need its own video. All right, so let's say we want to make our brick stitch starting out at five beads wide. So we don't wanna pick up all five beads at once, we wanna just pick up two beads. And that's the case, no matter how wide you want it to be, you're just gonna start with two beads. So pull these down to the end of your thread, if you like to use a stop bead, use a stop bead. I'm just going to hold my beads here and leave myself a little tail. Now to get started with ladder stitch, you're going to be swinging your needle around and going back through the very first bead that you strung on your thread. So go through that first bead and pull. And what you want is not this, you want the beads to be sitting right next to each other kind of like that. So to get them to stay, you're then gonna take your needle and you're gonna go down the second bead and pull. And you have something like this. If you wanna go through this again, just to reinforce it, you can certainly do that. However, these beads will start to straighten up the more that you are weaving. So if they're at a slight angle, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, I'm gonna make this starting out as five beads wide. The very next step would be to add one more bead. And we're going to be swinging around back through that second seed bead that we're coming out of just in the opposite direction. That gives us a third bead in this little chain. And again, remember we want these beads to be sitting next to each other. So to get that to happen, we're gonna be going up the bead that we just added and now we have three beads. Once again, just very slightly wonky, but they will tighten up, and this is just another reason why I say the Delica beads are perfect for brick stitch, or if you have any cube beads, because they will sit together so flush. Let's add on a fourth seed bead. So once again, pick one up, go through the opposite direction of that last bead on your chain, and pull. And now go down through that fourth seed bead and give these a little pull. And let's add our fifth bead. So I picked one up and I'm gonna go through that last bead in the opposite direction, pull, and then go back up through that bead. There we go. So this is gonna form the base of our brick stitch. Now let's say we wanna decrease the next row. Let's say we wanna make it four beads wide. Well, if you're decreasing or increasing, you're still gonna be picking up two of your beads to go on the next row. And then we're gonna be looking at something called the thread bridge. The thread bridge is the thread that's going across the top of your seed beads, right in between them. To decrease the row that's gonna sit above this, 
you're gonna go to the second thread bridge in. So this would be number one, and this would be number two. And coming from the back of that thread bridge, you're gonna go right underneath it and pull. So your thread's coming right underneath that thread there that's sitting on top of the first row. And then you're gonna go up through that second seed bead in your next row right above and pull. And then you're gonna go down through the seed bead on the end of the second row that you just added. And then back up through that other seed bead you just added on the second row. And then when you hold this with your forefinger and your thumb, give that thread a good pull, you can see another row is starting to form here on top of your base. The seed beads are sitting next to each other like you want, and they're starting to stack like bricks, hence the name Brick Stitch. Since we're learning a decrease at this point, this row is gonna be four seed beads wide sitting on top of a five seed bead base. To add another bead, let's pick one up and then look for the next thread bridge, which would be right here. You can see in between beads two and three there on the first row. So go through that and pull your bead so that it's sitting right on top of the thread bridge and then go up through the bead that you just added. Once again, hold with your thumb and your forefinger, pull that nice and tight all together, and there you have three beads already on the second row. Let's add our last one to this row, so we'll pick up another bead and do exactly the same thing. So look for the thread bridge that comes up next, which would be this one. Go underneath that, pull, let your seed bead sit there on the top and then go up through the bead that you just added. And holding everything together, pull it nice and tight. And that is how you decrease a brick stitch. Let's do one more decrease together, meaning our next row would be three beads wide. We're coming out of the seed bead on this left-hand side. Out of the top, I'm gonna to be picking up two, because remember we start our next brick stitch row with two, whether we're increasing or decreasing, unless we're finishing at a point. And to decrease, we're not gonna go through the first thread bridge. Nope, we're gonna go through the second one that we get to in between those next two beads coming through from behind the row and underneath the thread, sitting those beads on top, then going up through that bead we just added and down through the new first bead on that row and then back up the next bead so that we can finish our row and pull, hold it together and pull tight. And you can see by doing this, now the base of ladder stitch is actually sitting together in a more tight way and we didn't even have to go back and do any extra reinforcing. Let's finish off this row with one more bead, pick up one from behind the thread bridge on the row right below Put your needle underneath the thread, let the beads sit on top of that row, and go up the bead you just added. Now pull. I think pulling everything tightly is a very important part of brick stitch because you want everything to stay close together, otherwise it's going to impact the other rows in your design. Now let's talk about increasing your brick stitch. Say that I wanted to go back down here and make a row that is six beads wide. You can easily move through your brick stitch from one side to the other just by following your thread path. So to get to the other side, I'm just gonna go down through the bead next to this one, and there's multiple ways to do it. You're just gonna be going diagonally through these beads so your thread is not visible. Now I'm gonna flip my work because we're working on this end to increase by a bead. And to get started, once again, we're gonna start by picking up two beads. Now remember when we decreased, we went through the second thread bridge. To increase, you're gonna go through the first thread bridge with your two beads. So from the back of that and underneath the thread bridge, pop on two more beads, let them sit up there, and then just go up through the bead that you just added. Now it's up to you if you just wanna keep going or if you wanna do like we did in the decrease and go back down through that first bead 
and back up through the second one we added. It's up to you. It will eventually tighten up, but just like the ladder stitch, it's optional if you want to give it that extra reinforcement on the end. So you can see that this already has created an increase in size in this row. Let's continue on by picking up another bead going underneath the next thread bridge, then going up through the bead, same steps as we did before in the other rows when we were decreasing. The only difference is what we do on the ends. Picking up another bead, going under the thread bridge, and going up through the bead. We have four on so far. Let's pick up another one, go under the thread bridge, and up through the bead. And uh-oh, what do we do now? We don't have another thread bridge to go through and you wanna have six beads on this row. Well, it's actually really simple. You just pick up one more bead and instead of having to go through the thread bridge, you go directly down through the bead on the row below at the end and pull that. And there you go. Now you have a row with six beads. The only thing about doing that is that you need to find your way to the end of this row again in order to make another one. But it's not hard. Again, you're just following the thread path. I'm coming out of the bottom of this seed bead right here. We wanna make our way up here. And to do that, we don't wanna go up through these two beads because then what do we do? We need to go back down through this one or down through this one. No, we wanna go diagonally through these two beads over here That way we can go down this one and be heading in the right direction when we come out of this seed bead on the end to start our next row. And that is how you increase in brick stitch. So again, if you were to make another row that's seven beads wide, you would be picking up two seed beads and going through your first thread bridge and so on. If you were decreasing this again, you would still pick up two beads, but you would go through the second thread bridge that you get to. Let's finish up this tutorial by making our brick stitch come to a point so you can see how to end it with one bead on the end. Let's make our way through the piece, shall we? By say going through these two, and I'm just gonna turn this over so that we have our pointed area toward the top. And to get to where we wanna go to make our next row up here, I'm gonna go through these two seed beads on the side. So since we're tapering off, we need our next row to be two seed beads, which coincidentally is what we have to pick up anyway. So let's pick up our two. And remember to decrease, you're not going through the first thread bridge, you're going through the second one, which is all we have anyway. So go through that one. Go up through the seed bead that you just added. And if you want to, you can go down through this one that you just added and back up through that second one to reinforce it, but you really don't have to. And then what do we do when we just have a spot for one more seed bead to finish off our point? Well, we just pick up one seed bead and then we can go diagonally down through all these beads on the side if we want to. And when we pull this, it adds our one seed bead right there on the top, making everything come to a point. So if you take a close look at this from this end, you can see why these are sometimes used to finish off multi-strand necklaces and bracelets, because you can actually feed a strand through each one of these holes on your seed beads, just like in the yellow example I had earlier, and then taper everything off to a point where you can attach your clasp. One thing to keep in mind is the larger your beads, the more space that is going to be in between them. If you're working with seed beads or fire polish or something else, unless you're working with cubes where everything would fit together flush, the smaller the beads, the more clean the design looks. And like I said, I highly recommend it with Delica beads. Now this example was done with peyote stitch. I'm just wearing this ring because it is an example of what Delica beads are. And I personally kind of think of brick stitch as peyote stitch on its side where you still have that kind of alternating brick-like pattern in both types of stitches, 
but brick stitch is done more on the other axis where you're going in this example from down to up instead of from one side to the other growing your beading that way by seeing this tutorial, I hope you have a better understanding of brick stitch, how to start it, how to decrease, how to increase, and how to end it at a point. I will be coming back real soon to do a tutorial on this earring design, which is going to utilize brick stitch, and it will be beneficial for you to have a little bit of an understanding of how it works in its basic form before we move on to a little bit more complex design using smaller Delica beads. That is everything I have for you guys today. I hope this was a helpful lesson. Getting back to some basics, especially if you are new to bead weaving or need a refresher on this basic stitch. Hope you'll stay tuned for future tutorials, future videos like this one, and much more. Until next time, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidandopal.com. Thanks for watching!